Hi guys, thanks for watching. I wanted to do this comparison video. Um, I just got the Hot Toys Back to the Future Part 2 1 6 scale DeLorean uh, this week. And I've had this 1982 DeLorean for a couple of years now. And I've noticed some differences between the actual car and the Hot Toys car. And I hadn't seen any videos uh, on YouTube yet that talk about the differences. So I wanted to cover what I have noticed as far as differences go. And I'm sure I'm going to miss some. So please add comments on the video. Um, I would be curious to know what other things are different that I don't cover. Um, I'm here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. This is actually the EA uh, air show location. So behind me, they're setting up for that. Uh, so there may be some noise from that, although this is a quiet part of it, quite a quiet part of the area. Um, it's an airport, so there will be planes taking off, and I don't know, you might find that interesting. Okay, let's get started. Okay, looking at the front of the car, uh, if we just focus on the front bumper and the headlights, there's a couple of differences I'd like to point out. Um, the front bumper on the Hot Toys is all black from here down. The actual car, uh, it's obviously you can see it's black here. Underneath of that, it's painted, and it's painted the same color as the top of the front fascia. And then it transitions back to black for the lower spoiler here. Uh, the other difference that isn't going to show up on video here, um, I'll see if I can capture it in the garage where it's darker. Um, the blueness of the, of the headlights, and I think the website, Hot Toys' uh, website, points that out pretty well, or Sideshow's website. Uh, but you'll see it in other reviews too, they're just a blue. Um, when in reality, in the movie, if you watch the movie, and it's an 80s car, so it's these are old headlights, they're, they're a warm color. Um, so that's one of the differences. Uh, and then the other difference down here is just this is painted in real life. It's not on the Hot Toys. Since we're on this view here, this is one of the differences between a 1981 DeLorean and this 1982 DeLorean. The 1981 DeLoreans, uh, in the movie, that's all he used. And so in the movie, uh, you'll see the hood. It doesn't have this on it. The 1981 DeLoreans didn't have this. They added this in 1982, the DeLorean badge. Also on the hood, uh, they switched They switched out uh, in 1982 to take away these, these uh, indents here. Those two ridges that go through the hood, those are strictly 1981 DeLoreans uh, that have those. The 1982 does not have them. So you see this car doesn't have them. It doesn't mean that the Hot Toys version is wrong. It's actually correct. Uh, that's how it should look. Just wanted to show this a little bit better. Um, I, I don't think it really showed up looking at the front of the car, but on the side, you can see that paint difference. So here's your, here's your uh, silver paint up here, the bumper black. Uh, more silver paint, and then the black that transitions into the, the lower chin spoiler. All right, moving on to wheels. One of the first things I noticed on the Sideshow website when this car was being offered for pre-sale were the wheels. Um, I don't know if, it, if you guys can pick that up on the video but they look a lot larger. We'll look at the first or the front wheel. The, the back is the same. They look a lot larger on the model than they do in real life. Um, measuring the, the rim itself. So they're 14 inch rims in the front. In the back, they're 15. So this measures two and three quarters from the outside of the rim. To the outside of the rim so two and three quarter diameter and if you multiply that by six it's a six scale model that comes out to 16 and a half inches on the actual car it's just over 15 and a quarter so you're over an inch larger in diameter on your front wheels and we'll take a look at the back wheels the back wheels on the Hot Toys model 
come in right at three inches. And three inches times six to get the full scale will get you 18 inches. But if we measure the actual rear, rear uh, wheel, we get about just under 16 and a half. So on the Hot Toys model, the wheels on the back appear as if they're an inch and a half larger in the scale version uh, than they actually are in real life, which, I mean, it doesn't look bad. You know, the larger wheels do look cool, but if you're going for accuracy, that's just another one of the things that would be nice if, uh, if, if they just kept with the original size. And I don't know, um, I have not, I have not seen the part one model um, in person. I've seen some pictures, but uh, I would suspect that it's probably the same wheels. I know these function differently, um, but I would suspect they're using the same molds for, for most all of this stuff. Okay, I think this view does a pretty good job of showing my next observation. If you look at the Hot Toys car, the A-pillar on the door, it's wide at the bottom and then it gradually gets skinnier as it goes up. But if you look over to your left there, the actual A-pillar on the door, it's a consistent width all the way, all the way up. Um, and it also has like a really, on the actual car, a really gradual, um, I guess, ridge. It's, uh, it's not sharp like on the Hot Toys version. This is what I'm talking about here. It's, it's a pretty pronounced ridge on the Hot Toys car. But if you look at the actual car, it's, it's a very large radius. It's very smooth. There's no sharp edge here. And the same with the top of the, top of the door. There's no sharp edge. Um, it's a very sharp edge on the, on the toy. I wish they would have just like hit that, you know, with, a, with some sandpaper after it came out of the mold or, or maybe make a new mold. I don't know. From uh, the side view, kind of focusing on the door, um, there's a couple things in this area. If you look at the door, the door handle, on the model, it makes it look like your door handle goes up into the stainless here. Like this whole piece is what moves to open the door. Obviously not on the model, this doesn't function, but it's made to look like that's your door handle in real life. But that's not the case. In real life, your door handle is just this black part of the trim. Um, up into the stainless, there's no cut lines. There's no vertical cut lines. That's not part of the door handle. Also, looking at this, uh, looking at this louver section here, Hot Toys made it as an exact rectangle. But if you look at the real one, it's tapered. Um, starts out wide at the bottom, gets narrower as it goes up. What is interesting on the model is they kind of do that with the louvers themselves, these two cutouts. They start out wide down here and then they taper as they go up. I just don't know why they didn't taper the top of it. You'll also notice on my model, I have a lot of pieces missing from it. There's no fusion, there's no flux bands. I purposely did that so I didn't cover up certain things like this, like this piece here. When you get the model, it comes with all these pieces that, this is not a finished model that you're looking at, but I intentionally wanted to leave those off so you can see it one-to-one -one with an actual DeLorean. Um, and just really focusing on the, on the issues that are related to the car, not so much the movie props. Another thing I want to point out on the back, the back of the quarter panel here, you have this air intake. Um, this intake is air intake for the engine. The other side actually has the same look to it, but it's just a non-functioning air intake on the left-hand side. But the right-hand side, it's a functioning air intake. Anyway, the, what I want to point out on it, you have a straight line on the model here. It makes it look like your, your line goes horizontal, vertical, and then up at an angle. In real life, you can see it's got a, a different shape to it. It's, um, you got your straight line here, but then a big radius, and then maybe a straight line, a slight curve, but then another big radius. From this view, looking at the rear fascia, 
you can see that it's got the same paint color as the front fascia does, which is accurate. The real car front paint matches the rear paint. However, on the Hot Toys model, down here, they color it the same as the stainless. They make it look like your stainless continues on underneath the black part of the rear bumper. Wraps all the way around like that. If you look on the real car, it's not stainless and it's not meant to look like stainless. This piece here is the same color as the upper piece. Actually, it's all one piece, uh, but the lower part is meant to look the same as the upper. On the rear tail lights, on the Hot Toys model, they're all blacked out. Now, when you turn the lights on, you do see the different colors. I mean, they are colored lenses, but, but they have a smoked out tint to them. And in the real, the real car, and the movie did not change this, they're not, they're not blacked out. I mean, you can see clearly the white, the red, and the yellow. Um, also on my car, it says DeLorean and stainless. The cars didn't, didn't come that way. Uh, the person before me, I think, put that on. But it does say DeLorean there. It just doesn't have those stainless letters. So if that shows up on camera, there's, a rec there's like a rectangle around it. Uh, it's boxed out. And that, that box is recessed in. It's just cut a little bit. It's cut a little bit into the bumper. So that sits a little bit a little bit deeper. And then the letters themselves sit even further deeper. Um, if I were to pop these out, you would just you would just see the recesses that that would have been original to the car. But if you look on the hot toys, the hot toys does say DeLorean there, so that's good. But the letters are raised. The box itself is indented like it should be but the letters themselves are raised. They should also be indented. So it should be indented a little bit further than the, than the rectangle that uh, borders it. Another thing I wanted to point out here, just because I had noticed it on, on uh, some other reviews of the Hot Toys car, underneath, yeah, you can see it there. There's a silver box um, straight, straight, like centered up. Underneath there, some people were thinking that might be a fuel tank. And the real car does have that have that silver box. It's not a fuel tank. That's the oil pan for the engine. Uh, the fuel tank is in the front of the car. You'll also notice on the Hot Toys, there's no exhaust being shown. Um, in the movie, they actually rerouted the exhaust to kind of kick out the sides in the back still, but you don't have tips coming straight out the back. Whereas in the actual car, you do have those, but it's not, it's not anything that Hot Toys did wrong on this. That's, that's how the movie car was. And since we were talking the tail lights, uh, it just made me think of it. I can't, I can't really show it too well. Um, I'll, when I get back, to, when I get back home, I'll, I'll put this in the garage and turn all the lights on, and you can see how it looks. But on the Hot Toys version, um, and this is someone anybody could pick up. It's all the lights are on. I mean, in real life, you're not going to have your reverse light on with your headlights, your backup lights, your blinkers aren't blinking, but they're on. You're not going to have all those. You're not gonna have all those on. Um, and the high beams on the front of the car, the high beams are always on. Um, I guess some people probably do prefer it that way. You know, if you have the lights, just light them all up. Um, but for accuracy sake, I mean, if you have your headlights on, it's just gonna be two of the headlights, not all four, unless you're running high beams. And I think in the movie, they, they, they didn't use their high beams. Um, and back here, you're just going to have tail lights on. You're not going to have the reverse lights, and you're going to have your blinker lights constantly on either. I think that translates pretty well on the video. You can definitely see a difference. Um, the car itself has a warmer, warmer glow on the headlights. And the low beams are the outside lenses. The high beams are the inside. On the Hot Toys car, they have both the high beams and the low beams lit. Um, I don't know. I don't think in the movie they ever use the high beams. I could be wrong. Let me know. Um, also, 
Yeah, you can notice the difference. Uh, the Hot Toys is like a blue, a blue glow. It's actually more blue in person than it shows up on video. It would have been nice if they used warm LED bulbs uh, for those front headlights. But when the headlights are on, this is what you get for a taillight. It's uh, the center section of the three red strips. Obviously your reverse light, your turn signals are not gonna be on. If you look at the Hot Toys car, yeah. Okay, it's a center section. I mean, the bulb's pretty far set in there, so depending on how you look at it, if you're straight on, it's the center section, so okay, well, good job, Hot Toys. I would still kill the amber and the backup lights, because as you're displaying this, I, I don't know, at no point in the movie were all these lights lit up. It wasn't like, hey, turn them all on, uh, but that's just my opinion. From back here, it's a pretty good view on what I want to point out. You can see the wheels on my car. It's uh, it's right up to the edge of the uh, of the quarter panels there. As far as like in and out, it's side, or side to side. Right up to the edge. You go to the Hot Toys version, and boy, they are sunk in. It's an easy thing to fix. Um, with this version, these wheels, they do slide side to side, kind of in and out. So uh, just don't push them in all the way. To display your model bring them bring them out to almost to the edge of your car and it'll look more accurate okay so that's everything with the exterior of the car let's go ahead and compare the interior so it is pretty hot out um, you'll notice I have the microfiber cloth underneath here it's because it's actually the rubber I had the I set that car the toy car on here and the actual rubber was melting little marks in there so anyway I just wanted to prevent more of that okay with the doors open you can um, you can see the strap there the strap that's hanging and the movie car had them but this is unique to a 1982 and 1983 DeLorean all the movie cars are 81 so the strap should be inside it should be looped inside the handle it should be right in here it shouldn't be back here this is something that in the 1982 cars 1983 cars they did so you'll see that in this 1982 car it's not looped through here like it is in the movie it's its own separate attachment within the door so the hot toys car has this and it shouldn't this this wouldn't be here, it should be up here. So the headliner has, uh, dimensionally, just if you can kind of just look at, look at how that looks. It's like big ridges, pretty wide ridges on the top and the bottom. And the, the pocket itself is pretty narrow for your head. But if you go to the Hot Toys version, You can see that pocket is huge. It um, just another thing. It's not accurate to the real, the real thing. I suspect maybe they did this to get the figures to maybe fit better. On the real car, we've got a red light here on the back of the door. There's an amber light on the side, and there's another amber light on the side. Now the Hot Toys it doesn't light up, and that's fine. Um, and they do show. They do show the, the lights there. So you have your red lens, amber lens, but they totally left off the front. Uh, the doors do have dual latches and the Hot Toys version, you can see that forward latch right there. The real car has it. And the latch in the back is there. And that's accurate to the car. Okay, the seats. I'll get my shadow out of there. Um, they look wore out. And I don't know, maybe they flatten these things so that, again, you can get the figures to fit in there better. But it is just, I mean, it looks like a worn out cushion. Um, you look at the headrest. The headrest is 
popped forward, it's angled forward. The real car, it's just straight. I mean, the back of the seat continues on at the same, at the same line as the headrest. And also the stitching. I mean, the stitching wasn't scaled down at all. If you were to measure that stitch, and I did, it's 0 .8, 0 0.08 of an inch. And you multiply that by six to get it to the full scale version, it would almost be a half inch. Uh, I don't I don't know what article of clothing or upholstery you've seen with half inch long stitches. It's crazy. I don't know, and it's not really that, it, it would have been better just to leave it off. You know, I'll show you, so here's, Here's the seat. It does have the stitching. You can see how small the stitching is. I mean, it's it's tiny, and it doesn't it doesn't really raise up like big bumps in the model, like in the model, I should say. And you can see it's not wore out. It's not flat. Oh, the back um, the headrest. That's not angled forward. There's actually no way to angle it forward. It doesn't, it's not adjustable. You can see the driver's seat there too. It's at the same angle. You know, and little things like that. I mean, it's like you're watching the movie and these are things that you, I mean, they're kind of like part of the, part of the movie as you remember it. You know, these seats, I, I feel like this view here, you know, as Michael J. Fox is driving the car, you know, he's in his radiation suit. I mean, these components are so recognizable in the movie. It's like when you see differences in the model and it's wrong, it stands out. I don't know if this gives you a better view of that, but uh, the backrest continues on the same plane as the headrest. It's not angled forward like in the Hot Toys car. Okay, looking at the shift boot in the Hot Toys, we can get it to focus. The Hot Toys car, uh, you can see the prominent white stitching. Again, like the seat, prominent stitching, like a lot, a lot longer stitching than is accurate. Uh, so if you were to scale that up, it'd be about a half inch, half inch long stitches again. But you can see how puffy, how puffy that shift boot is. Um, almost looks like a turtleneck going up to the shifter knob, and I know it's because the material is all bunched up there, but. I uh, just, I don't know, I wish I could have done something different on that one. Also, on the center console, if you look at the border around the shift boot, you can see how it it's kind of a, it's almost like it's framed in. Um, there's like an extra bump in the plastic all around the shift boot. I mean, look at the real thing, it's flat. There's no, there's no bump up. It's just all flat around there. And my shift boot is old and worn out, so in the movie, it, I'm, I don't think it probably looks exactly like that. Uh, but you can see there's no white stitching. Um, I wish they would have used maybe black thread. It's just you look at that white stitching and it really kind of takes you out of it, you know? Okay, also in this view, notice the plutonium chamber gauges. So when they did that, it's the glove box. They lift up the glove box door and then they fit that all those components in there. Um, you can see how far it's set back. You can see it's like, um, there's a, there's a line here. There's a, there's a ridge. So that is accurate in the car. This is a knee pad. And then this is the dash. Well, the glove box goes all the way to that ridge. And this, it's like set way forward. It's set way forward and it's away from that. Um, I'll show you here. The glove box door is all the way to that ridge. There's no gap. The dash doesn't go all around the door. It just, it just goes on the sides and the top. And you can see the latch here too. This is another difference. The latch is just kind of inset within the door. It doesn't extend into this part. So in the movie, they just stuffed the gauges there. Now in this view here, you can kind of see that latch. It goes all the way, all the way to the edge of the door. That's not how it should be. 
Okay, I rotated them out a little bit so the sun can shine on the instrument panel. If you look at the instrument panel, notice those four boxes off to the left and on the right. The real car doesn't have those. Um, also, just to the top left of the steering wheel, see that like green? I don't know. It almost it almost looks like they tried to do like a battery indicator, like a battery level indicator. I don't know why they would do that. I mean, it's just an image on a printed piece of plastic. Um, but it looks like that's what that is. I, I can't tell. It's hard to see that little detail. The rest of the instrument panel uh, is pretty, pretty accurate. Everything inside those boxes, like those boxes there and those boxes there, if you were to crop that off, it would be pretty accurate, and I'll show you. All right. Okay. You can see the boxes don't exist on either side. But everything else looks pretty accurate. No battery level indicator. Don't know why they put that on there. Look at the steering wheel. To me, this is another iconic piece of the car. I don't know, as you're watching the movie, seeing the interior shots, you have the three switches that would be in here. Just the shape of the steering wheel. And it's kind of dished in. Well, not on the Hot Toys car. On the Hot Toys car, the shape is a little, it's off. Center section, that pad. On the Hot Toys car, it's like raised up. It's its own separate bumped out piece. Or it's made to look like that. I know it's all one molded piece with the steering wheel. But that's different. Just the shape of it. I don't know. You fans of the movie, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's different. Okay, now finally I'll show you the front. There's a latch under here. There's no spring, so it's a two-handed job. Looking under the hood, you do have that X that does appear on the Hot Toys car. And then they also have this cutout here for um, to seal up around the fuel cap. And there's a ridge you can see around the fuel cap. So that's accurate to the toy. On the toy, you also have these three caps. This is your, on the toy, the power button for the lights. In reality, it's, it's a uh, raised up cap and has slots on either side of it. That's overflow. So as you're filling up the car, if you happen to overflow, that's drainage for that. The center one is your fuel cap. The one closest here, this is a rubber cap. If I take it off, uh, it, it provides access to the hydraulic clutch master uh, cylinder reservoir. And the toy is correct on a spare tire. However, it's a space saver. It's not a full size. It doesn't have the same rim as the rest of the, as the, rest of the wheels. And you can see it down there. This is an aftermarket brace, so it didn't come with the car, but that, that is an original spare tire. And here's the frunk on the Hot Toys car. You can see that X. You can see the little cut out there for the fuel, fuel cap. You can see the three pieces. Now on the Hot Toys car, they make it look like you have to use a key to put in. That is accurate on the 81 DeLoreans. You did need to do that. Um, the earlier cars had a gas flap built into the hood so anybody could access it. Once they went away with that gas flap, um, eventually they went away to the, the style that you had seen on this 82 where there is no lock you just um, it's just a regular fuel door cap and then the spare tire 
Okay, I will touch on one uh, movie prop specific component that isn't accurate on the car. The flux capacitor in the car here, they, they give it a light gray. They give it a light gray color. And Diamond Select uh, is a toy company. They made quite a few flux capacitors and they made them in that light gray color. I just wonder if maybe people started seeing that and thinking that was an accurate color for that. If you look in the movie, it's a dark gray. Um, the prop that I have here is also a dark gray, meant to, meant to look like the movie prop. It's not 100% accurate, but I just, I do want to show it for the color part of it. In the movie, it should be a dark gray, similar to this color. Okay, well, I do want to thank you for, for watching. Um, if you found this enjoyable, entertaining, informative, feel free to subscribe. I do have a couple other video ideas that I'm going to put on this channel. Um, so at some point, you'll see more content. This is just the first video of this channel. And overall, I would say, I guess as far as final impressions, I do really like the car, uh, the, the Hot Toys car. I like this one too, but... The Hot Toys car, <clears throat> they did get quite a bit, quite a bit right. But it's the things that they got wrong, I feel like if they had access to a real DeLorean, which isn't, I mean, if you're going to do a model like this for a company, I would expect you would have that kind of research available. Uh, just to get some of these things right, you know, like the wheels, just size them right. The door handles, don't make them go into the stainless because that wasn't ever a thing and everything else we had talked about. Um, I don't want this video to be like buyer's remorse for anybody that did buy it. I mean, be happy with what you have. Um, it's still a cool car. If you go to late, um, what is it, Mike Lane Mods, he's got some uh, other, other additions you can add to it to make it more detailed. Uh, but the intent of the video is just to inform anybody that has one of these um, anybody that's looking to get one, or anybody that's just interested in, I guess, uh, details of a DeLorean itself. Maybe maybe some people are watching that aren't so into the hot toys, but they found the DeLorean interesting. Um, I just wanted to inform. I just wanted to get some of that information out there so that you guys can make a better, a better informed decision, because it is almost $1,000. Um, if you're expecting 100% movie accurate, um, it's really, I'd say it's probably 90% there. And ignorance is bliss too. I mean, if you don't care about those little details, um, yeah, most people aren't going to notice that, right? I mean, most people aren't going to notice those things. They're going to see the, all the details that are built into the car that are very cool. I mean, the light up feature is pretty sweet. Um, and they're not going to care about all these little little odds and ends and I'm really nitpicking here but I did want to get it out there because these are the facts this is a real DeLorean and this is what it's supposed to be based off of um, I don't want to end the video on a downer I know I was just the whole video I was like I'm tearing it apart that was kind of the point of it but this is uh, like I said this is the Oshkosh airport um, the EAA air show so I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of drive the DeLorean around I'll take you with me and I'll show you some of the areas of the airport that uh, if you're into aviation you might find interesting all right thanks for watching another thing i did want to point out um, just because it, it's in the movie and it's interesting um, as i was switching out my license plate again in the movie you know they go back in time at the very beginning there and the license plate flies off and it's spinning well the license plate it's actually not like the holes in the license plate are not what's used to attach the plate to the car it's actually surrounded all around by this bezel um so like there's no way that this is getting pulled out of this bezel and f and spinning on the ground however i will point out that you know the whole car does disappear right so if that whole car is disappearing around the license plate well it's just gonna fly off so so you know maybe that's maybe that's what they intended um but as far as like the speed of the car and and this thing flying off that would never that would never happen. Your whole bezel would have to come off, this whole thing. I've already unscrewed it. Um, 
on the back side it's it's got some fasteners i doubt that's original to the car these big washers and plastic bits but um that's how that's how it's installed from the from the back of the cover that's how that goes in